to coincide with the release of Team Yankee NATO Forces, Battlefront very kindly sent me a selection of miniatures to have a look at with the aim of painting them up for some tutorials to represent the Belgian forces for the game. So I started by painting the Leopard 1 following up last week with a tutorial for the Scorpion. And now in this third instalment, it's time to look at the infantry. Welcome to Minute Realms, my name's Stuart, and in this video I aim to do a pretty straightforward painting tutorial, giving you one solution, obviously paint miniatures your own way, but giving you a solution of how you may attempt some Belgium forces. I started by checking through the miniatures against the assembly guide on the Team Yankee website. This is loads of help. Inside the blister pack itself there are some images that show you how to build your miniatures up on the basis, but there's much more detail on the website. And they, they did the same for Flames of War as well. Really, really helpful, especially if you're not as a fay with the period as, as some others, just like myself. So these are metal infantry, pretty straightforward to clean up. I used a large file on the bottom to make sure they would sit nicely on the bases and then took off the mold line using a standard file. A healthy dollop of super glue on each of the slots on the base has meant that it squelched up around and filled the gap well and then I just used some activator to really seal them in quickly. I turned again to my Colours of War book, this is fantastic publication with Vallejo and Battlefront themselves for Flames of War and Team Yankee and it shows suggested colours to use from the Vallejo model colour range. So I had a quick look here at the NATO forces and I know that the example in the new book was to use a Canadian based uniform guide. So this is the studio paint scheme, essentially the box art. So that's always a handy reference as well. And what you see here on page 32 of the new Native Forces book itself is a Canadian basing and painting guide. And this is referenced in the book as the guide to follow. It does have some differences to the Colors of War book, so you can take your choice. I decided to go with this more as a base, um, just because it's more modern really, and I had more of these colors in my range. So I started by priming the miniature black, as is pretty standard for me. And I quite often do a zenith or highlight, but I decided with these that I wanted to start from the, the darker base color and work my way up and try to keep the paint scheme as simple as possible. Starting here with Refractive Green 890. Now it's listed as Reflective Green in all of the Battlefront literature. I don't know whether it's the name or the number that's wrong, but this is the number that matches the, the model color range. So I'm sticking with that. You'll see here I've given a nice overall flat coat of that. There is a little bit of black showing through underneath, but that gives it some added depth. The next stage is some 50-50 mix of uniform green and refractive green. And what I've done here is decided to give it a decent dry brush over the whole miniature. This picks out the detail, but leaves some of the, the darker refractive green underneath, giving you a, a first layer highlight already. And now just for straight uniform green on its own, using it as a top highlight. The trick here is not to go too heavy. It does dry a little bit duller, so at first it looks a little bit bright. But I'm using it as a top highlight here, so really just hitting the, the, the tops of those, those creases that are standing out, tops of the shoulders, tops of the arms and things. And it just really kind of gives you basically a three layer highlight. And I don't feel you need to put any washes and, and dirty the model down if you do this method. So now we move on to model color khaki, and this is the base color for all of the packs and webbing. The coverage is very good, and it painted over the, the green that was there before. The green underneath it is dark enough as well, so it does provide a nice shadow. So I felt that it, it was a fairly easy stage compared. Sometimes the webbing can be a nightmare, but on these miniatures, it was quite easy to get to all the different packs and straps and things, and I didn't find it too taxing, especially with the miniatures glued on the base as I have done here. Now, a lot of people will no doubt put in the comments, why have you stuck more down to the base first? I like to do these tutorials based on a way that many people will paint. People will, will stick their models down so they can play the game before they've painted them. And when you're painting hundreds or at least a, a vast number of these, these little things, it's a little bit easier sometimes to paint them as an army. And this, this tutorial really is aimed at army painting, not sort of the best display level ever. Otherwise, I'd be focusing on one single miniature here, but I wanted to make it a little bit more realistic. 
So while that coat's drying, I moved on to model kind of flat earth and I'm just painting in the wooden areas on the gun. And then highlighting the flat earth we're using model color light brown. Again, just a couple of thin lines here or there along the tops or the edges of the wood areas. So at this stage, I wanted to paint in the faces and hands using white gray. And the idea is I'm going to be using a contrast style paint afterwards. So I needed to give a lighter area to get the, the full effect from those kind of paints. I could paint more traditionally here going in with a flesh tone, but this will speed things up a little bit. Now we go back to the webbing and I'm using some beige here, again model colour, so it's 821. This is just a slightly lighter colour than the khaki and it's perfect for adding some highlights. Then to paint in the boots and the black areas of the weapon, I'm using Contrast Black Legion. This paint has great coverage, even though it's a contrast paint, it has a, a brownish tone to it. If you paint it over white areas, that will give you a bit of more natural highlight than you would, would get here painting over the green. But I'm not going to worry too much here. The, the miniatures are very, very small. I'm going to add some pigment to their boots later and that will pick out the detail and would take away any effect gained by doing a highlight on them anyway. Wanted to add a little bit more definition to the helmet, especially as there's no scrim on them. So I'm using some contrast Minotaur on green. I'm just painting a, a fine line around either side of that strapping that's on there. It just adds a little bit of shadow and adds that definition. Now that the uh, white grey has dried on the faces, I'm using some Vallejo Express colour dwarf skin. And again, I just paint this in directly over that, allowing it to pull. So you get that, that shadow in all of the recesses and it gives you a really, really nice skin effect. And you can leave it like that. It looks perfectly good. I will come back and highlight it slightly later on. And for that highlight, I'm using model color basic skin tone here. I'm just sort of adding some definition to the fingers, cheekbones and bridges and noses and things like that. So I'm using a soft pencil here just to add a little bit of highlight to the metal areas. I don't want it to look too shiny and glittering. And now that the boots are dry, I'm adding that dry pigment. This is a Vallejo again, and it's a light sienna. Just brushing it in dry into the boots and blowing the excess off. I'm going to go for some really simple basing here. This is a Geek Gaming Scenics Ready Mix base. And I don't know the name of this. I was sent this as a bit of an early review product. I believe it is available on their stores now. And it's a mixture of sand mix and flock. And it's quite a darker brown sand mix as compared to some of the other ones I was given. But you just wax some PVA down and then sprinkle it on. To add a little bit more detail, I added some Diorama Fix. That's from Vallejo. And this is European Mud. Finishing off the basing with some tufts and a black rim. And there we have it, a super simple, straightforward painting tutorial for Belgians in this instance, but the colour scheme obviously matches for other NATO nations, so you may well find these useful and transferable. It's not normally a period I cover or paint, though I do paint a lot in this scale, so it's been really, really fun having a go at these, and thank you very much to Battlefront for sending the miniatures to me. I hope you've enjoyed the video or found it useful. If you have, please do give us a like. It does help get the video seen by others, helps the algorithm and all of that kind of stuff. And if you are a gamer in this scale, please do check out all of the other painting tutorials and content I have on the channel. Lots of Flames of War stuff, but then things for other historical periods and also lots of fantasy things as well. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.